Hello and welcome to today's video. So today we're going to have a look at books on vintage paperbacks. So uh, such as this fantastic one here. Um, I've got quite a selection, about a dozen or so books uh, that I've picked up over the years that have helped me as a collector of vintage paperbacks. And um, I think you might find them interesting as well. Uh, some of them are brilliant, such as this one. Some of them not so good. And maybe these are the ones to avoid. Um, so without further ado, sit back, relax and uh, let's have a look. Okay, so the first book we're going to look at today is Over My Dead Body. Now, this one was uh, written by Lee Server, and it's uh, subtitled uh, The Sensational Age of the American Paperback, 1945 to 1955. And this is um, a, it's published by Chronicle Books, or was published by Chronicle Books in America. And that particular publisher, this one was just done, um, 1994, um, that particular publisher, Chronicle, are famous for their beautifully designed books. So when we have a look through this one, it's only American books that are covered, but you'll find that the actual book is stacked full of really nice uh, reproduction colour pictures of all the uh, of the book jackets. Um, the text is excellent anyway, um, but that's where the real strength of this one comes from. And that's simply down to the publisher being... Uh, Chronicle books being, you know, that's what they're famous for. So Over My Dead Body, um, a nice little book, um, hopefully not too expensive to get your hands on these days. So that's the first one. Now the next one we're going to have a look at, and this is quite an older one, Undercover, an illustrated history of American mass market paperbacks. Um, this one was put together by Thomas Bond. Um, this is also American, so it's Penguin USA. And this one was published in... 1982 this is a bit a bit of an older uh, uh, look at paperbacks now this is quite nice it does have a little bits on collecting and the different publishers um, there is some color but this isn't quite as glossy as the first book we had a look at um, there's still lots of good stuff here and there's nice chapters on the actual origins of a lot of the uh, the actual publishers This one is, um, this might prove a little bit harder to get hold of, but, um, you know, it depends how determined you are. Uh, but there's that one there, Undercover. Now, this one here, uh, The Mushroom Jungle uh, by Steve Holland. Um, so this is looking at the, uh, they called them the mushroom publishers because they sort of sprouted up um, just after the Second World War. And um, they, uh, as quickly as they appeared, they disappeared. Um, a lot of them having published sort of sordid or sensationalist stroke sexy sort of jackets. Um, and it didn't last very long. And then they were swallowed up or um, they just disappeared into uh, oblivion. Now, this is uh, fantastic. It's very, very well detailed. And if you're into British paperbacks, you're going to have to get this to see where their origins were. Um, so certainly some of the stories behind these are incredible. Um, really great book. I don't think this is uh, particularly difficult to get hold of, even to this day. As I said, it was published in Britain, uh, Zeon Books. And when did when was this one? Nineteen ninety three. So I think you'll pick up a copy of that without too much difficulty. And that's a really good read. Now this next one I've got <clears throat> collectible uh, paperbacks, and it's like a price guide um, by um, Gary Lovisi, um, who I'm sure most paperback collectors know. Now this was actually one that um, did take me a bit of time to track down, um, and it's actually a remaindered copy because you see the back cover has been sliced off um however i didn't buy it for that um because when you look through it is well like the overstreet comic book price guides it's stacked with photos and um if there's a particular author you might be wanting to look up and see what well, editions did come out in america this perhaps is is the one to turn to and it is really good and it's detailed so you can see why this would be um a perfect addition to anyone's uh, uh paperback collection so this one comes recommended for absolutely certain. The price is, well, you take those with a bit of a pinch of salt. The books come in G, V, G and fine. Um, you know, do take the, the prices with a bit of salt, a pinch of salt, because, you know, everything's conjective and uh, it's what people are willing to pay, isn't it? Um, I can't believe the price of some paperbacks these days. Now, this one um, 
is is great. Uh, it's the, the book of TV tie-ins. Uh, now I'm a big fan of TV and movie tie-ins for that um, matter, and um, this one uh, is great. Um, it is once again it's the US TV tie-ins, and there was equally as many as published in Britain. To be honest, everything going had a TV tie-in, but um, as well as um, you know, just a, a few illustrations. It is a definitive list and that's what uh that's what we're looking for um not a bad little book this as well and um worth tracking down that was 1997 i meant to see i forgot to mention when this was actually published the previous book the collectible and this was 2008 so that's uh even this is 10 years old now but um it's historical so apart from the prices being well out um the actual content is not going to change um, and yeah, that's not bad as well. Um, yeah, certainly uh, worth tracking down if you're into TV tie-ins. Now this next one, um, I took on a recommendation from uh, someone on one of the paperback groups on Facebook, um, Hard Boiled America, uh, Jeffrey O'Brien. And it's not exactly illustrated. However, it is just, um, it's, it's that basic story, how these books came to be and get published. And a look at that sort of classic 50s and 60s era. Um, and uh, from that point of view, it is worth a look at. Um, this uh, I got cheaply in the end, but it was it took me a while to track it down. 1981, this one came out. It's Jeffrey O'Brien. Along with the TV tie-ins, um, here's a look at movie tie-ins. Um, and I'm a big movie tie-in collector um not just for the sake of it there needs to be movies or movie series that i uh, enjoy such as i don't know the james bond books for example um however um just for having general knowledge on what was published movie tie-in wise um this is the one to go for and it's loads of information in here absolutely loads so uh this one also comes recommended uh 1994 okay now this next one, the book of paperbacks, um, Pierre Shorter's. Now, this when this was published, this was pretty much uh, it was one of the very first books published by Virgin Books in Britain, and um, it was by far the book on vintage paperbacks to get, and it still is a fantastic, fantastic read today. Now, I'm just going to check when it actually did uh, get published in 1981, so incredible, really, and. Um, what this guy's library must have been like, I have no idea, but um, this comes very well recommended. Um, it covers British and American publishers, predominantly American, but the British publishers all have their own chapters as well. Um, as you can see, there's lots to enjoy in this one. And the actual text is fantastic. So if there is any a book I can recommend, <clears throat> you try and get your hands on it's definitely this one um, i've not mentioned much about penguin books at all or pan for that matter now penguin um there's probably no other book publisher which has got so many devoted fans or has had so much written about the actual imprint um, and that would be a whole uh video in itself all i can say with regards to vintage penguin books particularly the british ones is there is a dedicated um collector's society um and i will put a link down below for it and um, if you're interested in the vintage penguin books do check them out now this one um i remember getting this one and th thinking i cannot wait to get it look at that what a brilliant brilliant cover um that however is as um <clears throat> excuse me is that's as good as it gets because it is more um, a reference guide more than anything else there's no illustrations but you could look up a particular author and you could find out exactly what they wrote and was published in America once again. And there was a price guide for like a, a nice, uh, a, a nice fine copy. So to be honest, something like that nowadays, it's hardly worth your time tracking down simply because all the information that's in it is online. Uh, and that's, that's the case with a lot of these things now. Now, you might recognize this from back to the, the start. This is another book by Lee Server, which is called Danger Is My Business. And as well as him look, in the first book, he looked at the uh, the pulp pa paperbacks. Now he's looking at uh, pulp magazines. Uh, and this is once again published by Chronicle Books. So it's beautifully illustrated. Um, uh, many would say that the pulps led to the paperbacks eventually. Um, and once again, it's a nice little piece 
to the paperback history and puzzle, as it were. And uh, this was a Chronicle book published in 1993. Now, I have left the best book till last, my favourite book on vintage paperbacks, and that's this one, The Great American Paperback. Now, this book is awesome. Um, I remember when it came out, published by Collector's Press, and I was very, very excited to get hold of a copy. And, well, you'll see why inside. So um, much at $60 when this came out. So it was by no means cheap. And let's just see when this was actually published. Because I've had it a few years now. For certain. 19... Oh, 2001. 2001. So it is now 17, 18 years old, if you can believe it. But I remember when this was published and absolutely loving it. Um, so what I'll do, it's beautifully illustrated. The actual chapters are phenomenal as well. So I just get to a convenient point there and I'll just flick through here. So there's book, there's chapters on each genre. And also on the main cover artist. It gives a sort of rarity with a book having like, if it's got three like little book symbols, it's, it just doesn't give a price. It just tells you how sort of rare and sought after they are this particular chapter is on all the uh, the sort of sex paperbacks of the uh, late 50s and 60s. You can see it's, it's phenomenally illustrated. I mean, it really is a, a beautiful book and the actual text to accompany it is equally as good. So um, this one definitely comes recommend. I've no idea how much copies of this must be selling for now, but I guess... Um, you know, it'll either be one end or the other. It'll be very expensive and you're going to have a bit of a job tracking a copy down or it'll be dirt cheap and there'll be loads of them around. Um, but as I said, all the main key books are featured. Um, all the publishers are looked at. Um, every genre is looked at. Um, it, it's great. It's a really, really great book. And uh, you'll go through this and you'll see dozens of books. You think, oh, I have to get a copy of that. I have to get a copy of that. And... Uh, it will uh it won't help your wallet but it will uh, certainly be a feast feast on your eyes here's another bit on the the dell map packs one of my uh, passions i just love those so you get the idea and that's only halfway through that's just a phenomenal phenomenal book here definitely comes recommended and what i will do um, if these are still in print any of these that are still around i will put links to um, in the description below so if you do fancy trying to pick one of these up um because you know even if you can't get this brand new i'm sure you'll be able to find a second hand copy uh, online somewhere and that's the great american paperback and there we go that's my uh, very brief look at some collector's books on uh, vintage paperbacks so I hope you enjoyed that look through these uh, these books on vintage paperbacks. Um, there's certainly some crackers in there. There's also a few duffs, which uh, hopefully now you're not going to get uh, stuck with buying one of those thinking it's something that it perhaps isn't. Now, anything that's still in print and even the ones that aren't, I'm going to try and put links to in the description down below. So if there's any of these that you do fancy getting straight away, please click there. They are affiliate links. They're no, no exp extra expense to you, but I might get a small uh, kickback from, say, Amazon or eBay uh, if you do decide to buy one from them, which helps keep the, uh, the channel running and um, getting me to bring more videos uh, like this for you. So once again, thank you for watching. Do give the video a thumbs up and uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And uh, I'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye.